some big injury news for one of the Baltimore Ravens fan favorites, somebody who we all love and cherish and can't wait till he gets back. Uh, and we got some other announcements coming from our favorite football team. Team, keep it clean. Uh, before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video, click the thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss not a single video. I love y'all. I always love seeing y'all every single day. I look forward to hearing from y'all in the comments section, and I appreciate you like crazy for supporting this channel the way that you do so let's get into it now um keaton mitchell keaton mitchell somebody who burst on the scene last year like literally burst on the scene um and he just came through with his lightning quick blazing speed uh the man was amazing man he, he averaged like 50 yards per carry and he was just lighting it up for the baltimore ravens and then uh late in december i believe it was where he got injured and the the, the thing with his injury which was the worst part about it is not only that it ended his season his rookie season prematurely last year but we just knew it would trickle on into this season and impact it in a negative way and that's exactly what it's doing when we heard from John Harbaugh earlier this offseason I mean we all figured that Keaton Mitchell would miss a chunk of the beginning of the year uh, to start things off so this news comes as no surprise but the Baltimore Ravens have made stuff a bit clearer when it comes to Keaton Mitchell and they announced that he will be starting the season on the physically unable to perform list now with that um the, there are new rules for the physically unable to perform list because before with the pup list you had to miss at least the first six games now that's if you start the regular season on the pup list we still in the off season now but we don't expect Keaton Mitchell to be ready by regular season but with the way that the pup list works if you start the regular season on the pup list now in 2024 you have to miss at least four games it's not six like it used to be you have to miss at least four games but if you start like right now the off season, he's on the pup list. Say for instance, and this is just for an example, if he were to be able to pass the physical, if he could pass the conditioning test and pass the physical, then he will be removed from the pup list. As long as it's before the um, excuse me before the regular season, he can come off the pup list at any time. But once the regular season starts and he was on the pup list, then he would have to miss at least four, the first four games. But we do anticipate with Keaton Mitchell, unfortunately, we do anticipate him missing at least the first four games. I honestly think it could end up being more than that because uh, John Harbaugh did say he ain't going to be back for a while. And if John Harbaugh saying something like that, then it's probably going to be a while. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully some crazy miracle will happen with Keith Mitchell. It's like, oh, hey, I'm good, y'all. I'm back. And we'd be like, all right, Keith, well, welcome aboard. But then um, Keith Mitchell wasn't the only person being placed on the physically unable to perform. Listen, I didn't even know uh, this next guy even had an injury. But the Baltimore Ravens also placed TJ Tampa on the pup list now the rookies we do know the rookies they reported on saturday they, they, they reported to training camp uh this past saturday so what i'm assuming because for, after covering these baltimore ravens for a while you start to see patterns and whatnot and some stuff can initially seem very alarming but it might not even be that big of a deal what i'm assuming because we've seen this before with veterans we've seen it with rookies i'm assuming that with tj tampa it's just because he didn't pass the Ravens conditioning test. That, that's all that I think it is. Maybe he had a couple too many burgers or something, hot dogs. Or maybe like, hey, he was having a lot of fun on his vacation. Then he came back and it's like, oh, this, hey, this Ravens conditioning test ain't no joke. But no, nah, I'm just joking about the burgers and hot dogs. I don't take that serious, please. But well, I, that's what I think it is. So again, like I said, the same thing with Keaton Mitchell, even though it, it won't apply to Keaton Mitchell. But with TJ Tampa, as soon as he passes that physical, as soon as he passes the conditioning test, then he can rejoin the Baltimore Ravens. He can rejoin the rookies. And then the veterans, when they report uh, this upcoming Saturday, I believe, but he can rejoin them and take in part in training camp. So Keaton Mitchell and TJ Tampa both being on uh, the physically unable to perform list. Now, this one, um, third round rookie, Adisa Isaac. They placed him on the non-football injury list. Now, I know with Adisa Isaac, I know he was dealing with some hamstring issues uh, throughout the offseason and whatnot. Um, they said that he had missed some time like in the, the, the mini camp, the OTAs and all that due to those hamstring issues. So I'm not sure if those are the issues that they're referring to when they put him on the non-football injury list. But non-football injury is an injury that took place away 
from the facility, away from the Baltimore Ravens. When you, when you get placed on a non-football injury list, the team is like, look, that ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> that, that's all on you, my friend. So with Adisa Isaac, hopefully that can get cleared up like ASAP. Uh, it's funny, I was just talking to my guy um, earlier today about the Baltimore Ravens and just their pass rush situation and just how it's a lot of question marks at that position still, Adisa Isaac being one of them. Um, but he's going to want to be healthy. I mean, obviously, these players want to be healthy as soon as possible, uh, but especially him in a position like that at pass rush because it's possible that an opportunity is right there. It's very, very possible because I feel like with the Ravens pass rush situation right now, it's just it's so – it's, it's nothing concrete right now because you got Adafi away, and it's like, okay, he's going to have a significant amount of time. You got Kyle Vinoy. I don't think he's going to be a three-down linebacker for the Ravens. Uh, you got David Ajabo, who he's been nice when he's played, but he's been hurt a lot. You got Tavius Robinson. What exactly is his role going to be? You got Malik Harrison, and he's more of a run defender, but as far as a pass rusher, question marks there. Then you got Adisa Isaac. So you got a lot of bodies there. You got a lot of players there. Then there's Malik Ham as well. Uh, so you you, you got a lot of uh, bodies there, but who's going to be the starter? Who's going to get the most playing time? Who's going to be out there uh, the most when it comes to this Baltimore Ravens defense? So not saying Adisa Isaac going to get this ton of playing time from the jump, but you want to be out there ASAP so you can get as much as you possibly can. Now, before we continue, I got to give a special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members and also all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you would like to become either a Team Keep It Clean channel member, you can click the join button. And if you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. I just appreciate y'all support, man. I appreciate y'all supporting because it's something that y'all don't have to do, but y'all do it. So I, I, I love y'all for that, and I appreciate y'all for it like crazy. Something else that I appreciate is when y'all have been sending in your questions from subscribers. See, the, the questions, if you want to send in a question, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Me, personally, I've been having a lot of fun sprinkling in these questions and, and throughout the different videos and stuff. So I appreciate y'all like crazy. I love you so much. Again, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notifications on. Let's get into this first one from my guy, Oreo Cookie. He said, is relevance worth it? Hey, Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. I have a unique question for you. I think we are all tired of the Ravens getting to the playoffs and then losing in them. We are. We are. And... It all just depends on how you look at it, but I'm um, going to keep going. He said, to me, it feels like the Cowboys in a way. Now, do I think that they could get over the hump? I'm a fan. I got to. But with the way the Ravens uh, being relevant, they never get draft picks earlier than the 20s and can never improve majorly by the draft. I've heard many times that the NFL owners would rather be relevant than win a championship. Would you rather us be relevant for the next 20 years and keep this cycle going? Or be bad for a few so we can improve in the draft. Sorry for the long question. I'm out. No, don't apologize for that, please. Why can't you do both? Why, why can't you do both? Look at the Chiefs. The Chiefs, they are they more than relevant. They just keep winning. They win everything all the time. But they also continue to improve throughout the draft as well. The Eagles. The Eagles do. They do a lot in free agency, though. Their draft's been... Uh, but they, they be winning a lot, too. Not as much as the Chiefs. Well, nobody been winning as much as the Chiefs. But, I mean, you, you get my point. There's there's more than one way to get it done. And with the draft, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, if you a winning team, if, if you're one of the best teams in the league, uh, regular season, then you, you're not going to be picking high in the draft. Unless you make some trades or something like that, you move around. But... I don't know. I, I just don't think that the two go totally against each other. I don't think the two got to be so opposite. Like, all right, just because we don't pick, we don't normally pick higher than the 20 or lower than the 20s, then we don't, we can't improve majorly in the draft. You get what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's, it's ways to get it done. Like I said, Ravens, they could do some moving around. They could, they, could, they could do some trades and whatnot. They could package some picks and move up. They could package some picks and move back. They could, they could do a lot of different stuff. They got options. It, to me, I think it just all depends on how you use those options. It's no guarantee that, oh, but just because you pick higher or lower than 20, whichever way you want to call it, if you pick in the 19s and under that, then that player that you get is going to be a hit no matter what. And there's also no guarantee that if you pick after the 20s that the player is not going to be a hit. Everything comes down to not only drafting, but more importantly, it comes down to development. That's the biggest 
issue with I think your question it's about development it all depends on the player and it depends on the position and it depends on what that team is historically better at not only drafting but developing next question came from my guy Mike he said new coach same result hope you and the family are doing exceptionally well and that goes out to all of team keep it clean hey I appreciate we appreciate that he said if Harbaugh leaves would a coach like Belichick take advantage of the skill set that Lamar Jackson has or would we have the same problem that's an interesting point Belichick uh I I don't know I don't know Belichick obviously a defensive minded head coach would he be able to take advantage of somebody like Lamar Jackson I just don't know uh because we've only seen the majority of what we've seen from Belichick has just been with Tom Brady um, so it's, it's really, really hard to say. We've seen him with, with Tom Brady and we've seen him with Mac Jones. We really haven't seen him with somebody like a Lamar Jackson. So I really don't know. That's a good, good, good question. But I think it's a question that we will never, uh, ever be able to get the answer to.